All right, this little gem is about uh, infinite geometric series. You may have seen the one on geometric series that are finite, which means they actually end. But uh, today we're going to talk about infinite geometric series. Now, if you have an arithmetic series where you have the numbers that have the common difference and you're adding them all up together, you can't use a formula for an infinite arithmetic series just because it continues on and you're adding or subtracting numbers. So there's really no end to it. When we have geometric series, it's possible, depending on our common ratio, or how much it's changing, if it gets infinitely smaller over time, we can say that it's basically where it's going to end, so we can come up with a, a general idea of what the sum looks like. The sum formula that we would use, by the way, is, let me see if I can get like a half decent color out here that I haven't used very much. Oh, it's kind of peach. Um, so S, or the sum, is equal to the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. It gets us to the idea of, of what the uh, form is going to look like, uh, assuming we can say that it has some bit of a finite sum. Before we even move further, I need to talk about the idea of converging versus diverging. If I, am, if I have a common ratio that's small enough, and we're going to say that occurs only at times when my common ratio, or the absolute value of my common ratio, is less than 1. So if I'm multiplying it by uh, a fraction, essentially every single time, that's, th that's the number I'm going up, I can say that it's going to converge. Convergence is where I have, I keep adding numbers to the series, but they're so small that it doesn't really have an overall effect. For instance, if my common ratio gets me down to a point that I'm adding one, one one millionth, and then the next time it gets me to one ten millionth and one hundred millionth and one billionth or whatever, the overall sum is pretty much locked into a certain place. It's not going to change very much, no matter what I do to it, because it would take forever for me to even go up one whole number. So we can sort of say that, yeah, it's converging. It, you know, Convergence is kind of like the idea of um, good enough. So when we have a common ratio that's less than 1, I'm multiplying by a number that's a fraction, I can say, yeah, it's probably you know good enough to say that I can make a sum out of it. Divergence, on the other hand, that's when I'm dealing with the idea of r, the absolute value, by the way, of r is greater than or equal to 1. Because when I start doing numbers by, say I am doing by 3, and my common ratio is you know, 2. Well, if I do times 2, the next one's going to be 6. Times 2 again, it's going to be 12. So I'm really never going to get rid of anything. But if I'm doing it by fractions, it's actually getting, the numbers will get smaller. So if I do 3 times uh, 1 half, uh, the first one knocks me down to 1 and a half, and then I do then I'm down to, sorry, one and one half. Then I'm down to three quarters. And then I'm down to three eighths. And then, you know, I'm down to three sixteenths and on so forth and so forth. Eventually the number is just going to get so small that the value doesn't really move at all. So I can say, yeah, it's good enough. Let's say it's converging. On the other hand, if it doesn't do that, it diverges, which means it's never-ending. Like I'm aiming at a sum, and then it's, well, I'm never going to reach it. So um, that's kind of the stuff that you have to say. So the type of questions that you're going to deal with um, is always first, is it converging? Because if you say, no, it's diverging, then really your problem's over, because there's no way you can get the sum anyway. So why well, keep trying? Let's look at a problem or two to see if we can get there. Now, uh, these two are set up in such a way, uh, I wanted to show you what the notation looked like as well for an infinite series, because it has the really nice looking infinity symbol right there. Um, but I just wanted to show it to you. Now, uh, the first thing that we need to do in terms of these questions is, does it converge? And if it does converge, what's the sum? So I need to figure out what the common difference is, of course. Same old thing, different day. Uh, one half divided by one is, of course, one half. One fourth divided by one half is one half. Incidentally enough, the next one down the line would probably be, uh, I'm going to go with, you know, I'm going to use a real jump in logic here and say one eighth. So one eighth divided by 
one fourth is one half. So I do have a common ratio. I don't know why I put one fourth there. This should be one half. Sorry about that. So my, I do have a common ratio, and my common ratio, the absolute value of it, is less than one or not. Well, I have one half, and it is less than one. Check. So I can say that this one converges. Uh, on the flip side of it, if it does converge, they want to know what the sum is. But the sum formula is super easy. So I can say that the sum is really the first term and uh, minus ace of 1, I should say. Ace of 1, 1 minus r. Because it becomes so small, it really kind of locks it into that first number. So I'm going to say that it's 1 divided by 1 minus 1 half. So that would be 1 over 1 half half, which gives me a final answer of 2. Which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. You're at 1, you're a half up, and then you're 3 quarters, and you just get smaller and smaller. So we're going to say that it's good enough to say that it's done, and we're going to uh, say that it's the sum is 2. On the other side of it, I need to look uh, at the notation. So my common ratio here would be negative 7 fourths. I'm going to raise it to the number of terms, which in case in this case would be infinity because it goes on. The first term starts with 1, so I could figure out what the ace of 1 term is if I needed to. Fortunately, I don't even need to bother. I need to answer this question. Is the absolute value of the common ratio less than 1? Well, my common ratio is negative 7 fourths. So that would make my absolute value here 7 over 4, which is not less than 1. So we can't say that it ever converges. We can say, nope, diverge. So that's it, real simple stuff. If you have an infinite geometric series, if you can get to a point where it's probably close enough, you can say that it converges. And you can find the sum with a really simple formula of the biggest term over 1 minus the common ratio. If, it ne if the absolute value of the common ratio is greater than or equal to 1, you can't really say it ever finishes because it's infinite. So we're going to say that it diverges, and that's the best that we can do. So that's it as far as infinite geometric series are concerned, or in some level of depth anyway. And uh, not a big deal. Hopefully it's uh, much, e much easier to deal with than finite geometric series, and so on and so forth. So good luck.